on Daryl Lawson live, coming to you from Southern California. Woo! Great time to be alive. It's Friday. Happy Friday. Just after 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, California time. They call it, what is it? Pacific Standard Time, PST. Psst. <laughs> Daryl Lawson live's on. <laughs> Just May 23rd. Oh, May's almost over. Love it. Looking forward to June, July, August. Looking forward to the rest of the year. Oh, Jesus has a lot in store for the people on this planet. I got a great uh, uh, program for you today. Oh, love it, love it. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Got some great revelation I want to give you. Oh, my God. Just can hardly wait to get to it. But yes, it is May 23rd, uh, 2014. And I hope you guys are, are, are listening to the programs and hearing them and doing them. I know you are. I'm, I'm getting... Uh, uh, Talk about a, a subject that is taboo. All right, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm going to be held accountable. Daryl Lawson, <laughs> Daryl Lawson Live will be held accountable for either giving the people uh, 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 certain things that they like to hear, or giving the whole world, right, the World Wide Web, uh, information that they need to hear. Oh, I mean, the Bible is is, is a book that's been in place for two thousand, three thousand plus years, right? So. It's been written a long time, and uh, so, but what happens with humans is that we are uh, lazy. <laughs> we are, <laughs> we are dumb. We are, uh, uh, we like to go the easy route, 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 whatever, right? And if you didn't watch my video yesterday, please watch my vi my webcast from yesterday. Now, you, you may be watching this video in the future. I did a video yesterday called Survivor, <laughs> Survivor versus Savior. <laughs> Isn't that a great title? Yeah. I talked about the television reality show Survivor, but I incorporated the scriptures into it, uh, bringing on the narrow road that leads to uh, life, right? Hallelujah. Anyways, if you didn't see that, please watch that. That is a powerful video right there, and a lot of great scriptures in there reminding us to do the right thing, all right? And so today, I was, uh, you know, in my devotional time, my alone time with Jesus, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And uh, I was getting some questions today on Facebook about uh, alcohol. Oh, oh, anyways, I ended up uh, uh, giving a whole bunch of scriptures to somebody on Facebook. They wanted, to un they wanted to understand what does the Bible say about alcohol. Oh, and so today I am going to touch a subject that you probably won't hear a lot in most churches. You probably won't hear this much on television, radio, or in book form. <laughs> I don't know why. It's. I mean, is is there not a Bible to read, anyways? So uh, if you can stand the fire, all right. If you can stand the scriptures, I'm not going to tell you what Daryl Lawson Live thinks. I'm going to tell you straight from the horse's mouth. Uh, should I call it? <laughs> well, Lord, you know what I'm talking about. Straight from the Bible, all right. Uh, what the Bible has to say about alcohol. Should we drink it? Uh, uh, should uh, Does it matter if, if we get drunk or does it matter if we just take a sip once in a while? Or we have a beer here and there. Or, you know, I'm not getting drunk. I'm just taking a glass of wine every now and then. Oh, I want to tell you what the Bible has to say about that. Does it matter what I think? Does it matter what uh, 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 Bud Light thinks? It doesn't matter what the local blah, blah, blah says. What does the Bible have to say? There are tons of scriptures about it. I want to tackle that subject today. Uh, and then I want to throw in uh, uh, on t uh, first last night I did a video. When was that video? Let me see. I'll scroll down. Scroll down here. You no, know, uh, God has a lot to say about that. And I was thinking about this. You know, uh, my job, your job, our job is to get people to the end, to finish the race, right? To finish the race of life on the earth strong, right? <laughs> and to make it to the end. And uh, the forces of darkness are very, very crafty, all right? They're very uh, uh, shadowy. They're, they, they are watchers. They are manipulators. They are, are they kick you when you're down. Oh! And they constantly watch people. And uh, isn't it funny? You can't even say funny, but let's just say strange. Isn't it very strange that... Uh, the weaknesses of the fathers, mothers, grandfathers, and, and past parents, grandparents, uh, usually uh, uh, comes to uh, uh, the, the, the family or the, uh, the youngest, I'll say the grandparents, they had weaknesses, whether it was physical weaknesses, physical diseases, whether it was things that they did, and then to the parents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents, all the way down to the, to the modern-day kids. 
Isn't it strange that the, the weaknesses and the things that you you said you, you swear you would never do, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be like great grand. I'm not going to be like grand. I'm not going to be like blah, blah. I'm not going to be like my parents. And all of a sudden they become exactly like little models. And people wonder why. Why did why did great grandpa and grandpa and, and my parents and why why did they all get heart attacks? Why did they get diabetes? Why did they get this that and mental diseases? Why and there's these patterns. And the doctors look at it in the physical uh, arena, and they uh, uh, they call it uh, uh, you know genetics, right? And it's partially true. And when I say genetics, I mean that. Uh, the Bible says, train a child in the, or, you know, a person in the way that they should go when they're a kid. And when they're older, they'll not depart from it. The reason why you see patterns in families is because <laughs> they, uh, the great great grandparents train the grand great great and the great great tra the, tra train the great and the great train, uh, you know, the grandparents and, the, and, the, and then their parents, they train each other, all right? Yeah, they ate, you know, uh, uh, this, that, and the other, and they, they made breakfast for 25 years for this kid, and then he started making the same thing. And really what it is, is it, it's the parents and, and the great-grandparents, they train every generation. And so what happens, the weaknesses are passed down from generation to generation. The strengths as well, thank God, the strengths are. But the weaknesses are, and that's also in the physical realm, diseases... Uh, I don't believe that diseases are actually found in the genes, in the DNA. I don't believe that. I don't believe God makes junk, all right? I, 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 I would rather, I, you know, looking at people, you know, uh, and different groups of people, uh, scientifically looking at that biblically, what I've noticed is that it's just a training program. Oh, this, the, the, the parents... Uh, 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 ate unhealthy, and they 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 passed up, passed down their unhealthy eating habits to the children, and it just goes from generation to generation. It's the same thing with their weaknesses and their strengths, right? So, hopefully, when someone gets born again, spirit filled, Jesus, fill me, you know, save me, you know, save me from my sins, Jesus, and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Hopefully, we then start to have eyes to see and ears to hear, right? And, and renewed hearts after God, and we start paying attention to uh, to everything in our lives, right? And so then we'll realize, my God, this is stupid. I shouldn't eat like this. I should exercise. I should not talk like this. I should not go and do this. Yeah, but, you know, gr my parents did that. You know, so what? My great, great, you know, it's called tradition. And the Bible says that Negative tradition, bad tradition makes the word of God of none effect. Oh, and I, 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 I said to myself a long time ago, when I saw the negative traits, everybody has them in my parents and my grand, great, you know, my great grandparents, grandparents, great, -grand, whatever, all down the family tree. I said to myself, I, no, no, I'm not allowing their craziness to be pushed into my life. Screw that. No, this generational curse, that's basically what it is. It's not in your DNA, it's in your actions, right? Uh, so anyways, a baby is born without sin. I don't care what anybody says. The Bible says that Jesus said the little children are, are pure. Forbid them, allow them, forbid them not, allow the little children to come unto me. That means on earth and in heaven. So children will not uh, go to hell if they die, all right? So little children, I'm talking about little children before they know the difference between right and wrong, all right? And at that point, they have to choose right. They usually, well, not usually, everyone chooses wrong, <laughs> one way or another, all right? If Adam and Eve didn't sin by taking the fruit, they would have sinned next week. They would have sinned the next day. So it's not a matter of, oh, those stupid first couple, all right? If, if Why did they sin? If it wasn't the apple, it would have been the next day. It would have been the next day. So it just, it just happened to be... Uh, I, I say apple. Let's just say fruit. Nobody. Re I believe it was an apple, even though it doesn't say in those Genesis verses it was an apple. The Bible calls us and God's loved ones the apple of His eye. It's also a different rendition saying the pupil of His eye. But I like the apple. We're the apple of God's eye. Jesus is the apple of God, of God the Father's eye, and we're the apple. Of, of Jesus as the Holy Spirit and the Father's eyes, all right? So I love that saying, and I think it has reference to the Garden of Eden. 
So I do think it was an apple because of other verses that point to it. Now, I don't really care, but <laughs> I think it's a good uh, it's a good guess one way or another. Anyways, it was a piece of fruit, but if it wasn't that day, it would have been another day. All right, so. Uh, Oh, they sinned. Oh, at taking the apple. If it wasn't the if it wasn't the tree, it would have been something up something else. You know, so you know, don't you can't tell me that Adam and Eve just had one time to sin. Oh, it would have been they would have been kicked out of the garden one way or another. All right, <laughs> that's just human beings, all right. And if it wasn't, you know, and and oh, I wouldn't have done that. Yeah, we all did it. We've all been kicked out of the garden of Eden. All right, it's, we have our own lives on the earth. It's called sin. Every, the Bible says all have sinned. So Adam and Eve and last 6,000 years of people are the same, right? We all need the blood of Jesus. We all need the word of God. We all need the power of the Holy Spirit. All right. So uh, in saying all of that, you know, uh, I want to get into alcohol. I want it. I want it. You know, can we? As a Christian, as a born-again, spirit-filled uh, a Christian, born-again, spirit-filled person, can I? Am I allowed to? What does the Bible say? All right. And I want to get into that. And so what I want to do is I want to encourage people to be stronger. Oh, I want to encourage people to uh, be uh, uh, more powerful. Oh, listen, last night I said all that because I was thinking about this. And I talked about that video I did what was four days ago about the fallen angel Lucifer. Well, guess what? Guess what? Last night I saw the fallen angel Lucifer, all right? <laughs> Daryl, before, all right? I've seen the devil before in person, yeah. And uh, he doesn't like to be seen. He doesn't too much to the world. He he likes to hide. He doesn't, he, he does more damage when people just don't believe it, all right? So that's why a lot of churches and religions just don't talk about him. And the devil loves it. The devil goes, thank you very much, <laughs> churches and synagogues and mosques and all these blah 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 uh, and temples thank you for not teaching about Jesus the Messiah and thank you for not uh, uh, teaching about the uh, the fallen angel Lucifer and how he's a loser but how he comes around to steal kill and destroy etc etc so the devil's really happy when people don't point out him as the enemy anyways if the Bible talks about it, we should talk about it. I mean, is, is it that difficult? Really, it's not that difficult, right? <laughs> so, so, so anyways, I'm going to see if this... Oh, yeah, it's perfectly... Okay, there you go. So anyway, so he shows up, and uh, I won't get into all the, the details about that. But sure enough, guess what? I saw, I saw him before uh, a few times. Uh, one time I was brought down into the pit of hell. I was brought down into, the, into hell. Hell's not just some kind of symbolic place. Hell's not on the earth. A lot of movies and people say, wow, hell's on the earth. Well, you're wrong. Hell is not on the earth. You're wrong. Hell is in the earth. All right. <laughs> now there, there's, uh, there's hellish events on the earth. Oh yeah. Guess where the demons go? Guess where the demons and the fallen angels get to roam on the earth when people don't pray? Anyways, countries and cities and towns and villages and families are destroyed by these forces of darkness on a daily basis. Oh, yeah, and billions and billions of people have been dragged to hell as a result of their works, right? Which is a real place in the middle of this earth. Okay. Been there, done that, bought the T-shirt kind of thing. Yeah, I've been there, and uh, I've been there several times. Don't like it, don't want to go back. Technically, I'd like to just have a video. I don't really like to be down there. It's a place uh, empty, of joy. It's a place empty of happiness. It's a, it's a place empty of love. It's a place of darkness and sadness and loneliness and torment. Oh, who wants to go there? It's not the happiest place on earth. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> well, neither is Disneyland, but still. Disneyland is a million times, a trillion times better than that. Anyways, so I've been there. I've seen the, I've seen the, I've seen the throne room of the devil. Yes, he has a throne room, blah, blah, blah. Yes, it's kingdom sucks. Yes, it's all burnt. Yes, it's ugly. Yes, he's a doofus. Yes, he can't, the devil can't build a proper doghouse, never mind a, a wall around his throne. I mean, etc., etc. They're losers. They can't build anything. That lasts. That's why they have to go and use humans to do their work on the earth. And then when they do get involved, they just destroy uh, cities and countries and nations. That's all they can do. They cannot even build. I saw the I saw the, the wall 
of the uh, of that surrounded da- the, the I was going to say David. No, the devil's throne, right in hell. In hell, it's the ugliest piece of crap I've ever seen. I mean, it is bad. It is it is bad. I mean, he can't even he can't even paint the fence. I mean, who's got a fence around their throne? Can you say loser? Why? Because they don't have any creativity. The devil used to have. The, fall, uh, the, the fallen angel Lucifer, before he fell, used to have creativity. He used to have the anointing of God. He used to be able to say, I can do all things through Christ, the Holy Spirit, oh, who gives me strength. But he can't say that anymore because he doesn't have it. He's lost his anointing. He is miserable. He is confused. He is full of fear. He is full of envy. He hates anybody else getting any kind of pat on the back. He hates it. He is insecure. So when you get those thoughts or when you're attacked or someone gets those kind of thoughts, what, what any of those, right? Insecurity, fear, torment, you're, it's coming from these beings that actually feel that themselves. They, they, they don't want you to know that. But the devil is the most insecure being in the, in, in the universe. So that's why when he infiltrates a city, a nation, a family, whatever, him and his fallen angels and his demons... That's what that's what he brings. He brings fear. He brings torment. He brings destruction because that's all he has in his bag. That's it. I wanted to mention that because when I do studying in the scriptures on, on a subject, doesn't matter what it is. And today I'm going to look at alcohol. Should we be drinking? Should we be drinking alcohol? When if an officer pulls me over, or I get you know in a in, uh, in an area where there's a, there's a uh, officers are checking for people to be drinking. Uh, you know, they say to me, hey, have you been drinking tonight? Of course I've been drinking tonight. What? I've been drinking water and orange juice, this, that, and the other, and coconut. Whatever. And I know what they're saying. Have you been drinking alcohol, right? And so, you know, should we be drinking alcohol? Is it right for us to drink alcohol? What does the Bible say? I want to tackle that. Why? Because there is a fallen angel and a kingdom of darkness that loves to weaken Human beings on the earth, all right? Weaken Adam and Eve, weaken humans for, for the last 6,000 years, one way or another. With, uh, with our eating habits, with our lifestyle, with our drinking habits, with anything. Ignorance, laziness, I don't care what we label or what we have. The forces of darkness cannot stand a person that has power, love, and a sound mind, which is self-discipline by God. They cannot stand that. They love the human race in a weakened state, which is exactly what the New World Order loves. The New World Order loves nations and and countries that are what? Lazy and weak and broke and dependent and unarmed. Yeah. And that's exactly what their rulers, their their, their dark spiritual fathers love. All right. The, The fallen angel Lucifer biblically is the father of anybody that's not born again in spirit field, all right? So I don't care if they call themselves Jewish. I don't care if they call themselves Hindu, Mormon, Buddhist, uh, uh, whatever, atheist. If a person's not born again in spirit field, their father biblically is called the devil, is the devil, spiritually. They may have an earthly father, but their spiritual father is the devil, even if they don't believe in the devil, all right? So, and so the reason I'm tackling, and I tackle all the subjects like this, and the reason I do this is because I want people to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I know the forces of darkness and what they do and what they've done to families and what they're continue, continually wanting to do. And so when I give scriptures to people every day of the week, Monday through Friday, Daryl Lawson live on live stream, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Sunday mornings, 10 a.m., I do it to strengthen the people so that they can go into, into whatever battle they may face in May, June, July with the tools to overcome. Hallelujah! He that overcomes shall be given uh, the right to the tree of life, the book of Revelation says. So I want people to be overcomers. Now, we're overcomers in Christ when we get born again, spirit-filled. But if you plan to die and go to heaven right there, that's great. But if you plan to live for a week, two weeks, a month, years, then you better get the armor of God because you're going to go into many, 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 many battles, all right? And a lot of people uh, don't make it. They don't make it to the end. They don't make it to their full uh, uh, lifespan. They die early or, or <clears throat> they lose the majority of battles in their lives. And that should not be. It's, there's no reason why that should be. 
Jesus has left on the earth uh, <clears throat> everything that pertains to life and godliness. And so we have at our disposal the tools to go into battle and kick royal butt, boomba, or, or demonic butt, right? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> All right, let's, the chat room's right here. I'll just say hi to people. And then, uh, what time is it? It's Friday. I can't keep you that long, but it's your Friday, right? And maybe I'll just get right into this very quickly. Daryl's in the house. Daryl. I love it. It's like Daryl. Daryl. Mackins. Chalaka, chalaka, boomba. Love it. All right. <laughs> oh, we're talking about a dream right here. I love it. Talking about uh, the Mark of the Beast. Yeah, the Mark of the Beast is coming. Hey, on my Facebook today, I, po I posted a article that was written, I think, by the... Uh, the, what is the article, right? A short article, but I just, it's a reminder. The uspatriot.com, every American, and let me just, let me just clarify that. Every American and every person on the planet will be tagged with an RFID microchip or tattoo for Obamacare. They're saying by 2017. This is, you know, or sooner, right? So, uh, I don't know when the rapture is going to happen, but that's when it's going to happen. All right. So, when's it going to happen? After I leave. Jesus said, pray that you may be counted worthy to escape, all right, the RFID testing that shall come upon the whole world. Yes, yes, and more yes. Here's a good one by Mark, Max Kaiser, talking about the manipulation of the gold prices. Of course, the prices of gold, all right, and the markets are, are fixed, all right, like a casino. Barclays manipulated gold as soon as it stopped manipulating a, a LIBOR. Max Kaiser, Max Kaiser is one of the most intellectual on the money, <laughs> on the mark, financial an a a anal a a analysts in the world. Yeah, very good. He's a common uh, a visitor on Alex Jones's show. That's how I got to learn about him, and I like his articles. Sometimes uh, he is so smart that people don't know what he's talking about, right? But he does. But, but you know. But anyways, it, it would be good to read that article about how gold is manipulated. Wonder if the price of gold's gonna go up or it's gonna go down. It depends on what's beneficial to the new world order. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, Oregon, uh, Oregon, Oregon counties defeat Monsanto. It's possible to come against Monsanto, the wicked company, against their genetically modified products and win. Did you know that? So don't get. I talked about before. Before I get into alcohol, all right? Oh yeah. And listen, if you if you don't like me talking about the subject of drinking alcohol. And, and you're you're offended, and that bothers you. Oh, I love it! Woo! That I'm doing my job. All right, <laughs> all right. Here's one by Press TV, one of the one of the great uh, information uh, uh, sites in the world. Uh, UN, the United Nations, slams the Vatican over child sex abuse. The Vatican is the biggest organization on the earth that operates in child sex trafficking. Yes, child slavery. Uh, you name it. You name the evil. They're the top of the pile in doing it. Actually, they're the they're the mother of all evil on the earth. Yeah. So it's a great one right here. Uh, but the, yeah, Amy says they're sickos. That's right. That's a good word for them. Sickos. You know, I don't care if you wear a little funny red hat and a little red white robe. You're a sicko. Pope Hee-Haw Francis is the false prophet that is helping Obama uh, set up a one-world government right now. Yeah, 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 and take over Jerusalem. If you don't know that, that's not my problem. That's happening. Oh, Japanese are a little upset. It says here, RT.com, that the United States uh, Japanese mayor sounds battle cry over U.S. military base plans. Uh, the USA is now an empire, right? That is no longer going into the world to set them free. They're going there to set up an empire. This is the revised Roman Empire set up by the New World Order that's using the USA, all right? If you don't know that, that's the case. So um, you don't need all these bases, you know? Uh, some of the politicians are correct. Very few saying, bring the troops home. If you want to support the troops, bring them home. You don't need the troops, the U.S. troops in any countries on the earth. You don't need them. You have your drones, you have your missiles, you have your military, you bring the troops home. I believe that, I agree with that. There's no reason why troops should be losing arms, legs, and lives in foreign countries nowadays. No, zero. There's no reason. Zero. Now, I've read some reports the last few days and, and, uh, and weeks about the military uh, really not hiring very many people anymore because really the New World Order doesn't trust the U.S. military. They'd like to see them blow up. They'd like to see them sick. They'd like to see them get diseased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Why? Because the U.S. military are a threat to the New World Order. So they're trying to diminish or kill the U.S. military personnel and set up a global, national, one world order, multinational, uh, 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 under the United Nations uh, 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 military. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's already happening, yeah. All right, so that's some of the information there. I could get into uh, many other articles. Oh, look at that beautiful purple plant. <laughs> you can tell I'm a... I'm a botanist or whatever they call that, right? I, uh, oh, yeah, there. that's a purple plant to me, right? But I have the article right here. Five herbs that relieve an anxiety, all right? You become what you eat spiritually and physically. So if you want to relieve anxiety and pressure and stress, uh, pray, get born again, spirit-filled, and eat right, all right? And drink right. I thought this was another evil uh, uh, practice uh, getting worse. New York abortion bill allows shooting babies through the heart with poison to kill them. If that's not right from the pit of hell, I don't know what is. SaveAmericaFoundation.com New York abortion bill allows shooting babies through the heart with poison to kill them. Are you out of your mind, you demon-possessed freaks? Yes, they are. That is a plan from the pit of hell. The devil hates humans, always has, always will. Here's a here's a here's a heading I put here, uh, uh, actually a poster to remind people the new world order plans to exterminate ninety percent of the world's population. Do you know that? Yeah. So uh, when the rapture happens, you think it's bad now? Oh, wait till we leave. Wait till we leave. I'm gonna plug the new Left Behind movie coming out with Nicolas Cage. I think it's coming out uh, what in the summer or the fall. The new Left Behind, all about the rapture. Oh, you got to watch it. It's a biblical doctrine. It is not fake. It's not been made up by some Dorcas church somewhere, doofus church, or, or the Vatican. The rapture is a Bible truth. I've talked about that. Watch my videos on that. It's, been, it's happened before. It will happen soon, and it will happen after we leave as well. Oh, anyways, you can see all that. Uh, Russia will retaliate NATO activities. Russia should. NATO is a New World Order organization. Russia has the right and should defend herself, all right? Well, he's communist. They're communists. The communist in the White House is worse, all right? I said all that to say, get on my Facebook, and I have the best articles on the planet. We can talk. We can we can communicate. We can uh, chat. We can, It's all the same, right? And then we can uh, uh, swap articles. Woo, you send me your articles. I'll... I'll uh, I'll, I'll, I'll send you mine, and we'll, we'll, we'll get the information out as fast as we can. Yeah. And don't forget, I'm also on Twitter, all right? I'm also on Twitter. So if you go to DarylLawsonLive.com or DarylLawson.com, you'll see my Twitter feeds right there. You can get all the articles right there live. Click, 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 and in just short format on Twitter, and you can see the live Twitter feed on my website. Okay, let's go to the subject that everybody's been waiting for. Whoa! Should we, as a born-again, spirit-filled person, drink alcohol? Oh, I thought Jesus, I thought Jesus turned the water into wine. <laughs> I was at a wedding one time, and the and the you know, some of the parents were saying, "We're going to spike the punch." It was a, it was a non-alcoholic wedding, right? And the uh, bride and the groom said, "Okay, hey, uh, well, the the the." the the parents weren't born again. The couple were born again, spirit filled. But the the parents uh, of the of the bride and groom were saying, "Well, you know, Jesus drank wine. You need to have wine at your wedding or, or alcohol." So the bride said, "Okay, you bring the water. You pray that it turns into wine, and we'll drink it." Oh Lord Jesus! And, and that was it. That was the end of it, right there. I laughed. I love it. It's a great thing. You probably heard about that before, but. That was used at that wedding. So nobody drank at that wedding. <laughs> you know, well, Jesus, Jesus turned the water into wine. Well, I'll get into that. Now, I'm, I'm going to lay aside the stories. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give the scriptures. Now, there's many stories about alcohol in the Bible, all right? You can read the story about Noah and how his son Ham was cursed as a result of him drinking alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can read the story about uh, a lot who committed incest because he was drinking alcohol. And so I'm not going to talk about the story. I'm going to talk about the exact scriptures 
that talk about alcohol, what God thinks about you and I drinking alcohol, all right, on the earth. And let me throw this out there as well as a as a, as a heading. I put a scripture here. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not even talking about drunk. I'm talking about just drinking alcohol. I'm not talking about getting drunk. Because I think we all should know what the Bible says about about drunk, about getting drunk, all right? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6.10, which was kind of interesting. So I think this is where Phil Robertson from Duck Dynasty quoted the other day. Actually, it was yesterday, all over the news. Oh, everybody's upset with, you know, the... Uh, the, the worldly people are upset that Phil Robertson from Duck Dynasty, I think on the Easter message he was preaching about uh, homosexuality, what the Bible says. He's just written on the Bible. I'm, ah, I hate speech. You can't get more love speech than the Bible, all right? Anyways, and I think he quoted this one. This was a very popular, uh, should be a very popular verse for everybody. I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about here about getting drunk because we all should know about getting drunk. I'm talking about drinking alcohol. 1 Corinthians 6.10, about, you know, just an umbrella. I'm not even talking about getting drunk, but here's a scripture about getting drunk. Thieves, greedy people, drunkards, people that are abusive, cheaters, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. So that's just a known fact. So anybody that gets drunk all the time or is a drunk, you will not go to heaven. You can accept Jesus, you can get... Uh, 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 you could say you get spirit filled, but if you operate on a constant basis and die in your drunken state, you're going to hell. And when I accept the Jesus, yeah, but you die as a drunkard. Now, if you get drunk and you you're, you're in getting a car crash or whatever, you, oh Lord, forgive me of my sins. If you repent of your sins before you die of your drunkenness, you will go to heaven. But how many people don't? And they, they, they fall asleep and they die in their sleep and they vomit over themselves and they, and they asphyxiate themselves. They, they choke themselves. And they're going to hell. Now I'm not, I, 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 hey, I didn't write this. Drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God as well as all, all the other sinners, right? Some of you were like that once, but you were cleansed. Ooh, Lord, you were made holy and right. By Jesus and by the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. So I'm not talking about getting drunk. We should know that uh, uh, getting drunk is a sin. But what about sipping wine? What about drinking beers? What about uh, uh, filling your coffee with uh, alcohol? Whatever. Well, uh, the next verse says, uh, you say, I'm allowed to do anything. This is 1 Corinthians 6, 12, after those two verses. But not everything is good for you. I won't even get into the statistics about the DUIs. I won't get into statistics about how many people die in car accidents uh, uh, about with alcohol. I won't get into the genetically modified uh, wheat that that is being used for alcohol that that is is poison for the system. I won't, I won't even get about. I won't even get into the facts about how many marriages are destroyed because of. I won't even get into that. I, and and do I have to even mention that you'll never. Be a drunk if you never drink. I won't even mention that. Oh, I just did. <laughs> you can't fall off a cliff you never get near, right? Oh, you can say, I'm allowed to do anything, Paul said, but not everything is good for you. And even though I'm allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. Oh, that's good advice. Now let's get into the scriptures about drinking alcohol. I didn't write this. Now remember, when I when I read these scriptures, I'll do them fast because I know it's your Friday. Uh, <clears throat> remember, there is a devil. He likes you to be in a weakened state. I don't care what it is. He loves poverty coming into your life so that you don't have influence. He loves you to be tormented with debt. He loves you to be unarmed. He loves you to, he loves you to be sick. He loves you to be under the influence <clears throat> all right, of drugs or alcohol so that in weakened state, you'll make the wrong decisions and yield your will and your life and your decisions his way. Let me just say that. And and on top of that, let me just say this as well. Uh, oh, the Old Testament and the New Testament is, is by the same author. All right. <laughs> so don't get this Old Testament is different from the New Testament mentality. It's different, but it's the same God that wrote the Old and New Testaments. So unless the Old Testament has been changed, <clears throat> specifically recorded by the New Testament, the laws still exist. So don't forget that. Well, we're in the New Testament. It's the same book. All right, so if you see laws in the Old Testament, 
that haven't been changed by the New Testament, you still have to obey them. Oh my God, Daryl. It's just for you and I to be strong. I, I Listen, I'm not your enemy. I want to give you the scriptures and the armor, <clears throat> which is the word of God, and the wisdom and knowledge of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> so that you can go into every battle and win <clears throat> in the name of Jesus. Okay. Boom, boom. Let's get to, I'm just going to do these randomly. No specific order as I was studying them today. All right. Proverbs chapter 31. Look at this. <clears throat> okay. Well, let's just look at uh, a few verses right here. Now, the Bible says that when you get born again, spirit-filled, you are a king and a priest, right? Through Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, your sins are washed away. You become a joint and, heir, joint and a joint heir with Jesus. You become heir with Jesus. You become a king in the kingdom of God through Jesus, right? Okay, so it's Proverbs 31, verse 4 to 6. It's not for kings. Now, I didn't write this. It's not for kings to guzzle wine. It's not for kings to drink wine. It's not for rulers should crave alcohol. Oh, they should not crave alcohol. This is what Proverbs 31 says. To drink, guzzle, or crave alcohol. Oh, for if they drink, they may forget the law and not give justice to the oppressed. This is what I'm talking about. We need our marbles. The Bible says to be sober-minded. I mean, you can't be more sober, soberly-minded uh, 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 than not drinking, right? Oh, and I'm talking, you can throw in, you can throw in uh, 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 pills, addicted to pills. You could throw in marijuana here. You could throw in uh, any kind of, of, of pills that make us uh, not be in the right mind. I'm telling you, it's all part of it. The Bible says in the last days, the reason why the Antichrist will uh, uh, gain his new world order will because people will be hooked on alcohol and uh, pharmaceuticals, all right? Or <laughs> drugs, yeah. Right from the book of Revelation. Anyways, uh, for if they drink, they may forget the law and, and not give justice to the oppressed. You'll do the wrong thing. So it's telling you it's not for you to drink. Uh, verse 6, alcohol is for the dying and wine for those that are dying and in bitter distress and going to hell. That's basically what it says. It's not for you kings to guzzle wine or drink or crave alcohol. I'm just telling you. So when we go through these verses, you tell me, should you drink alcohol, right? Here's what God is telling you. This is what Jesus was to show up to right before your face. Well, I thought Jesus drank alcohol. Listen, when I finish these scriptures, about 15 different references here, uh, uh, with about, uh, fifth, about 15 references here to alcohol, you tell me if Jesus served or drank alcohol. Oh, I, I can I can honestly say that after studying over and over the scriptures, Jesus never drank alcoholic beverages. He didn't serve them. He didn't agree with them. Because why would the Old and the New Testament scriptures say something different uh, than what Jesus did? The, 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 the scriptures are written by Jesus. So if Jesus wrote Proverbs 31, why would he serve it? Why would he create it? Well, what, what, what did he create? When he, when he did the marriage uh, uh, miracle wine service, right, when he turned the water into wine, he made a substance that tastes exactly like alcohol with no alcoholic uh, 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 properties in it at all. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did. Because Jesus and the Word are one. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. So G I can say it definitely 100%. That Jesus never served or tasted uh, uh, alcohol uh, uh, because it, it, would, it would have went against exactly his teaching and his word in the Bible. Yeah. So I can definitely say 100% that the alcohol, or the or not the alcohol, but the alcohol, well, like everybody else drank, is not what Jesus drank or his disciples. He didn't push it. Now, I don't know if they drank it somewhere else, but when Jesus was turning the water into wine or Jesus was drinking, he was not drinking alcohol from the scriptures here. Because if I put all the scriptures together that Jesus wrote, why would Jesus disobey his own word? He wouldn't. He's one with it. Okay, think about that. Okay, anyways. Not for you to guzzle wine or to crave alcohol. There you go. Hosea chapter 4, verse 11. This is Jesus speaking in Proverbs. This is Jesus speaking in Hosea. Chapter 4, verse 11. A wine has robbed my people of their understanding. Jesus says wine and alcohol robs people of their understanding. Why would Jesus 
push alcoholic drinks then. He wouldn't. The thief comes. The thief. John 10.10, 10, the thief. That devil that I saw last night. He doesn't like this teaching today. I don't care what he thinks. Sucker. The devil. John 10 comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Rob, destroy. Kill and destroy. Yeah. So he said here. Jesus said in Hosea. By the Holy Spirit, thousands of years ago, wine has robbed my people of their understanding. Booba, we need all the marbles in our head we need that we that we that we can get. Wine has robbed my people. So robbery happens through alcohol. Yeah, I've seen people over the years could have had you know wealth, could have had their marriage survived. Could have had a wonderful life, but this happened to them. Wine and alcohol robbed them of their lives, of their understanding. Hence, everything else in their lives was stolen. Oh my, even their health. Hosea 4.11. Wine robs people. Alcohol robs people. There you go. Deuteronomy 32.33. I love this one. Wine is the venom of serpents. When anybody drinks alcohol, you're sucking in the venom, the poison of serpents. I don't want to give the devil any poison and venom in my system. Are you out of your mind? I have enough trouble with my own head, my own brains, my own thing without uh, mixing myself up. Look at this. Deuteronomy 32, 33. Wine is the poison or the venom of serpents. The deadly poison of cobras. Holy God in heaven. Deuteronomy 32, 33. Jesus said wine. What? So he's not going to serve this kind of wine at the wedding. Oh yeah, Jesus, can you please serve venom of serpents and deadly poison of cobras? Oh, he, he, God so loved the world that he gave us alcohol. What the? Doesn't even make sense. Wine is the venom of serpents. That's why I don't drink alcohol. It's not Daryl talking. It's Jesus talking in Deuteronomy. Jesus is talking in Hosea and Proverbs. Do what you will with it, but I'm giving you what the Bible says. Wine is the venom of serpents. The deadly, po the deadly poison? I don't want serpents in my life. I don't want the deadly poison of cobras. Are you out of your mind? Deadly poison. I can drink a little bit of, of venom, a little bit of poison. Okay, it's connected to serpents and cobras. Go ahead then. Jesus said that Proverbs again, in 20, uh, jumping from Deuteronomy to Proverbs again. No specific order. Just I found these fascinating. Proverbs 20, verse 1. Wine produces people who mock God, mockers. Alcohol produces fools. Alcohol leads to fighting. Those led astray by alcohol cannot be wise. I know 100% Jesus didn't drink this and Jesus did not serve this. Jesus' bar, happy hours, now open. He didn't do that. Now, if you're getting angry, I didn't write this. All right? This is, this is way above my pay grade. <laughs> All right? I didn't write this. <laughs> Proverbs 20. A wine alcohol produces... Mocker. In the last days, many mockers, right? Show mock. Now, the reason why people are weak and sick and perish and don't understand the scriptures is because I believe part of the reason why is the people that get born again spirit field become so weakened and poisoned and zombified uh, because of alcohol. I can do anything now unto Jesus. Okay, all right. I wonder why you mock the best. Scriptures. I wonder why you don't understand about the new. I wonder why you don't understand about the vision of dreams. I wonder why you don't accept the tithe. I wonder why blah 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 blah. You have no understanding, or you're just like a little uh, immature. Because why? Because it's robbed your understanding. You are stunting your growth. Okay, spiritually and physically. You become a mocker of the scriptures. It says alcohol produces just alcohol produces. Mockery, fools, mockers. I don't, I, I don't want. I don't want wine to produce that in my life or alcohol. Alcohol leads to fights. Oh, you mean what? Well, 
You don't, you don't want any brawls and fights in your life? And not only, not only physical fights, also spiritual fights. The devils will attack you when you're inebriated. Oh, yes! Those led away by alcohol. Those led astray. See, people are led astray. Daryl, can I have one sip? Go ahead. Be led astray if you want. It says those led astray by drink cannot be wise. You cannot be wise. So the Bible says if you start drinking alcohol, you cannot be wise in God's sight. I didn't write this. Proverbs 21, the next chapter. Those who love alcohol will never be rich. I, 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 or poise this question, ask this question. Why do you want to in the first place? I always ask myself, why do I want to drink? You know, I go to a restaurant. You know, they get the wine list. Uh, I don't drink alcohol. Why? I don't need to. Why do I want to? Why, why do I need to pay for something that I don't need? I don't need that. And as well as a hundred uh, other reasons, right? We're going through those who love alcohol will never be rich. Now, I don't care if you slice and dice that spiritually, physically, I don't like it. I don't like it. Well, I know a lot of people who drink that are rich. Are they? It's not God's definition of rich. I want God's definition of rich. Those who love alcohol will never be rich. I don't like that. Boo. Isaiah 5, 22. To 24. What sorrow. Whoa, I don't like that. What sorrow and pain. For those who are heroes. At drinking alcohol. And wine. And boast about all the alcohol they can drink or hold. The whole world does that. They take bribes to let the wicked go free. They punish the innocent. Just, therefore, just as the fire licks up the stubble and dry grass shrivels in the flame, so their roots will rot and their flowers will wither. For they have rejected the law of the Lord of Heaven's armies. They have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. All connected to alcohol here. So that means if I drink alcohol, I'm despising the word of the Holy One? I didn't write this. That means my roots will rot, my flowers of my life will wither? Oh, God. I will, I will take bribes in my life. I'll make the wrong choices. And he says, what sorrow awaits me? Oh, God, no, no, no. I'll have a coconut water. Thank you. I don't want sorrow awaiting for me. I don't want it. No, I don't want it. And then it gets even like heavy duty. You've rejected the law of the Lord. They have despised the word. By drinking alcohol? I didn't write this. Jeremiah 35, 8. And he put all the verses together. The Bible says, out of the two or three witnesses, let everything be established. Every teaching, every foundation, every uh, uh, thing that we learn has to be, has to have and should have multiple scriptures to back up a subject. All right? So if you're studying healing, find all the scriptures on healing. If you're finding tithing, all the scriptures. If you're finding the rapture, all the scriptures. Uh, or, 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 or many scriptures, two or three or four or five, more the better. Comes to alcohol, whoa, not just one, not so one can, you can manipulate it to do and say what you want. Jeremiah 35, Woo! verse 8 and 18 and 19 says, So we have obeyed him in all these things. We have, had, we have never had a drink of wine to this day. Nor have our wives, our sons, or our daughters. This is the Rechabites that were called. Then Jeremiah turned to the Rechabites and said, This is what the Lord of Heaven army, the Heaven's army says, the God of Israel. You have obeyed your ancestor in every respect, following all his instructions. Therefore, this is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Jehonadab, the, uh, uh, or the Rechabites, right? Uh, son of Rechab, will always have descendants who serve me. Now here's a special blessing upon, uh, upon people that stay away from alcohol. That he says, you will always have descendants who serve Jesus. 
We have never drank wine to this day. We haven't, our wives, our sons, or our daughters. And that special blessing the Lord puts upon them and says, you will always have descendants who serve me. Jeremiah 35, verses 8 and 18 and 19. Oh! <laughs> so that sounds like uh, Indian right there. Love it. I have Indian in my ancestry tree, right? Give me from fire water. No, I don't want fire water. I want fire Holy Spirit. <laughs> so I, I see here, here's another reason uh, to have the blessing. If you want your descendants to be blessed, stop drinking alcohol. A special blessing to have your children and your descendants serving God is promised to those who don't drink alcohol. Jeremiah 35. Whoa! Anyways, well, I think I'll take that one. D Daniel 1, Daniel chapter 1, verse 15, 16. Oh, Daniel. You know, the book, the book of Daniel shows Daniel's life, the prophet Daniel, who was taken to Babylon from Jerusalem, right? And we know the story of Daniel and the lion's den. You know, through the book of Daniel, there is... Uh, it's very difficult, if impossible, to find any scripture about Daniel, about him sinning in his life. Daniel had a pretty squeaky clean life. Now, he sinned, of course, but it's not recorded. Not like other people in the Bibles. Their, their, their shortcomings, their sins are just right there. But Daniel, you can't find his mistakes in the book of Daniel. Wonder why? Daniel chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. At the end of 10 days, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier. Looked healthier? Talking about alcohol drinking. They weren't alcohol drinkers. And they looked healthier and better nourished than anybody around that was eating the food assigned by the king. So after that, the attendant fed them only vegetables instead of the food and wine and alcohol for the others. Oh, boom, boom. Boom, boom. So when I study, I go, man, I want the miracles. I want the promotions of Daniel. But it's directly related to him staying away from alcohol. Oh, man, I, I, if I get thrown in the lion's den, I hope, you know, hope God saves me. Well, then you got to do what Daniel did. Not only did he pray three times a day, he didn't even drink alcohol. Oh, and he looked healthier. I think from the report that I, uh, I read that's not put up by the alcohol uh, <laughs> companies, People actually are healthier, are more healthier when they do not drink alcohol. Yeah. And there's tons of stuff up there. I have in right here. I have apple cider vinegar. Whoa, that packs a bite. You want to be healthy for your stomach? You want to be healthy for uh, 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 medicinal? There's tons of stuff without the alcohol. I'm just reading what the Bible says. This is not what Daryl says. So Daniel was blessed. And he was a uh, uh, healthier and better nurse than anybody around. And smarter, by the way. Yeah, he was the smartest person in the king's court. Daniel 1, 15 and 16. It says he didn't want the alcohol from the king. He wanted the vegetables and water. Yeah. Proverbs 23, jumping back. Into, and I'm not gonna, I don't have time to go into everyone, but Proverbs 23, 29 to 35. Who has problems? Who has sorrow? Ugh. Who was always fighting again? Who was always complaining? Who has unnecessary bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? It is the one who spends long hours in the taverns trying out new drinks. The Bible says here specifically, this is Jesus talking. Jesus said this, don't gaze at the wine. Yeah, but I can do anything than Jesus. Fine, do whatever you want. But Jesus said, don't even look at the wine. Don't gaze at the wine list. Don't gaze at the wine. Well, how can you even drink it if you don't look at it? Oh, what is Jesus saying here? Don't even look at it. If you don't look at it, you can't even drink it. Okay, don't gaze at the wine. Don't look how red it is and bubbly, how it sparkles in the cup. He said, don't even look at it. Never mind, don't drink it. How smooth it goes down with your supper. He said, don't even look at it. I, this is Jesus talking. I didn't say this. But I'm saying what he said. For in the end, it bites you. Remember we talking about serpents? Yeah. Like a poisonous snake. It stings like a viper. See how the alcohol is so connected with that freaky, deaky, short, blonde-haired, freaky angel that I saw? Yeah. You'll get hallucinations. You will say crazy things. You will stagger.
When I'll wake up, I said, when will I wake up so I can look for another drink? <laughs> Vipers, not good. Don't gaze at the wine. Don't look at it. But I like some bubbly. Hey, this is what Jesus said. So I can definitely say by reading these verses that Jesus didn't drink it when he was on the earth and didn't push it. Oh, you're not going to hear this in the churches. 99.9% of churches and religious institutions will not talk about this. Isaiah 5, jumping back to Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11, 15. And notice back, just, you know, looking back at Proverbs 23. Anguish, troubles, problems, sorrow, fighting. This all is connected into the spiritual and physical realms. Okay, same thing here in Isaiah 5, 11 to 15. What sorrow? How many times does it, does it connect alcohol with sorrow? I, I ain't going to touch that crap. I ain't going to do it. What sorrow for those who get up early in the morning looking for a drink of alcohol and spend long evenings drinking wine to make themselves flaming drunk. Well, they didn't start off drunk, right? No drunk intended to get drunk, did they? I mean, to be a drunk. No. Oh, they furnish wine and lovely music at their parties, tambourine, flutes, the harps, but they never think about the Lord. But they never think about the Lord or notice what he's doing. See, wine sucks away from the presence of the Lord. So my people will go into exile. Oh, alcohol is connected to slavery here. Destruction. People brought down very low. Humiliations, all tied with alcohol. And, and Isaiah 5, 11 to 15. Oh, can't read it all. Anyways, Romans 14. 21. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or alcohol or do anything else if it might cause another believer to, believer to stumble. Because we won't be in control. It's not a good testimony, Romans chapter 14, verse 21 says. Hooking it with all the other scriptures. Oh, Ephesians 5, 18. Don't get drunk with wine, alcohol. But I didn't intend to, officer. I, I, I only had, well, I thought it was one. Alcohol will ruin your life. Ephesians 5.18. Instead, oh, here, here's what we should, you should do instead. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why they call it, uh, uh, this, the local store, uh, spirits, right? We sell spirits here. It's a, alcohol is a counterfeit to the Holy Spirit, yeah. It really is. I don't feel good. Well, go pray an hour. Cast devils out of your life. Do spiritual warfare. Speak the word of God. Now nah, it's easier just to have a sip of wine to relax. I don't. I don't need that to relax. I need to go for a run, eat right, pray. Ah, he said. Instead, he said. Instead, instead. In Ephesians five eighteen. Instead, 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 instead. This is Jesus talking. Jesus said, said all of this. I wonder what Jesus thinks about alcohol. There you go. I didn't say that Jesus said it. Now I'm saying it. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, hey! Luke 1. And then we'll pray in Luke and Micah 2. Luke 1, 15. It's talking about John the Baptist here. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. Talking about alcohol. What? He must never touch wine or alcoholic drinks. I just put this verse in here because uh, the Bible says that John the Baptist was great in the eyes of the Lord. And it gives one of the reasons why. Because he never touched wine or alcohol drink, alcoholic drinks. So I, I think I want to be great in the eyes of the Lord. I want to be great in the eyes of the Lord. Do you want to be great in the eyes of the Lord? Well, that's for him. All those other verses were for all of us. Why isn't this verse for us? It's all for us. He will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never, not even one time with the with the bubbly celebration for the Super Bowl. You mean with a glass of wine with my meal, Jesus? God said he must never touch wine. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever, never touch it. 
or or any all, all, all alcoholic drinks. You must never touch it. Wine or any other alcoholic drinks. How can, is that not plain right there? Is that not specific? Luke one fifteen. Instead, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. I think there is a direct a direct correlation between uh, 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 the uh, alcohol and the Holy Spirit. Alcohol pushes the anointing of God out of our lives. Yeah. It, it's always in the Bible this way. You want serpents, you want sorrow, you want cobras, you want the forces of darkness, you want robbery, blah, blah, blah. Alcohol is all connected to that. On the other side, those that stay away from it, their family generations get blessed or cursed, depending on which side they go. He must never touch wine or alcoholic drinks. He will be filled instead with the Holy Spirit. Woo! So I, I look at that and I think, you know what? Why do I want to quench the Holy Spirit by taking alcohol? No, 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 no. I want to be great in the eyes of the Lord. So you tell me, if you drink alcohol, can you be great in the eyes of the Lord? Booba! He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. My God! This happened to me, by the way. My parents uh, were having a hard time in labor before I was born, and for some reason, they were never real. real they didn't read the Bible. They weren't born again, spirit filled. Uh, but they, the Holy Spirit came in the room, and they decided to pray. And so they just said they asked God to help with the labor. They were they were just heathens. All of a sudden, as soon as they prayed, oh God, we ask for your help with this birth. Now understand that a child, unborn or born, is a is a is a child of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why all babies that die, whether they're aborted or or, or, or after uh, crib death or whatever, or some kind of accident or whatever, uh, they immediately go to heaven. All right. So when when somebody, where two or three agree on earth, is touching some, oh my God, I'm telling you, as soon as they said, I don't know all the reasons why it happened, I just know it happened, they prayed, oh God, please help us with this childbirth. As soon as they said amen, boomba, I, whoa, boomba, I came forth. I was born on a prayer. I tell you, I was filled with the Holy Ghost, even in my mother's tummy. John the Baptist, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. Oh, Lord! You must never touch wine or alcoholic drinks. So you tell me. You tell me should you drink alcohol. You tell me if you need wine with your supper. If you get upset, hey, then you get upset with Jesus because these aren't my verses. Now they're my verses, but I I, I took them. I, 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 I've adopted these ones. See how there's a there's a... There is a war going on with the Holy Spirit or alcohol. Oh. And I determined a long time ago that I, I saw, I saw these verses in life before I ever read them. And I thought, no, no, I see the venom. I see the cobras. I see the robbing. I see the stealing. I see the sorrow. I ain't even going to look at you. I ain't going to look at the wine. I ain't going to look at the beer, even though I love the taste and smell of beer. I tell you. I used to pop a, 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 a cap off of my dad's uh, beers. Oh, I love the smell of beer. We used to suck the foam off the top. I saw what it did and I said, no, sirree. I will not look at it in the glass. Not look at it on the nice hot day, the, the bottle, the cool looking bottle. No, I won't even look at you. I curse you in the name of Jesus. There's a direct correlation between the power of the Holy Spirit in one's life and alcohol. 100%. And you want to know the good preachers on the earth, the good men and women of God, the good people of God, will speak like what I'm just telling you right now. The people that speak opposite to what I've just said are not your friend. Are not good people and men and women of God. They're not. Why? Look at the last verse here. Micah. Book of Micah in the Old Testament, chapter 2, verse 11. Suppose a prophet, a preacher, a religious leader, person, full of lies, full of what? Full of lies, says to you, 
I'll preach to you the joys of wine and alcohol. That's just the kind of prophet, religious leader that you would like. Oh my God! The Bible says the people on the earth that preach it's okay to drink alcohol are prophets full of lies. I didn't say, Jesus said that. Suppose a prophet full of lies. You would like that, wouldn't you? The Bible says. You would like a prophet full of lies to say to you, I'll preach to you the joys of wine and alcohol. That's just the kind of prophet you would like. I don't want that. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to go near that. I don't want to listen to that. If I hear that, I know that that person, that prophet, is full of lies. According to Micah chapter 2 verse 11. And I put them all together. And that's just, a, that's just a scratching the surface of this colossal subject in the Bible. I mean, there are tons of other uh, examples throughout the Bible you could bring up including these. And you tell me, should you or shouldn't you? <laughs> Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. We, we want to be great in the eyes of the Lord. We want to be great in the eyes of the Lord. We don't care to be great in the eyes of the world. We want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Even before we're born. Hallelujah. But since we're born, we want it now and every day. Holy Spirit, we apologize to you for our lives and for the, for the nations, for resisting you. Oh, in every way, uh, uh, shape and form, Lord. We don't want alcohol. We don't want those spirits. We want you, Holy Spirit. We apologize for what's been going on on the earth. Forgive the nations. For their stupidity and their stupor and their ignorance, Lord. And especially in the so-called body of Christ around the world, the churches. Oh, Lord, let people wake up before it's too late, Lord. We don't have very much time left, Lord. We don't want to be left behind. We don't want to be stupid. We don't want to be filled with the venom and poison of the snakes and that fallen angel system, Lord. Lord, fill us with your new wine. Ah, give us your bread, your water, your wine from heaven. Hallelujah. We thirst for that. Break every bondage of alcoholism, alcohol, uh, 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 spirits, demons, the forces of darkness. They're using alcohol. Break their power from the people's lives off America and the nations, Lord. Loose the people from the bondage of alcohol that has plagued the planet for so many years, Lord. Break them free in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, Holy Spirit. We love you. We need you instead. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I tell you, you're not going to hear this one hardly at all in these last days, but it's my job. It's my, it's my privilege. It's, it's the mandate of heaven to give you stuff that will get you stronger and not weaker. Oh, faster and not slower in these last days. So that when I stand before God one day, he's going to say, Daryl, did you feed my sheep? Daryl, did you love me? Then feed my sheep. I love you, Jesus. You know I love Then feed my sheep what I said in my word. Oh, Lord. Well, happy, 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 happy hour, right? <laughs> in the Holy Ghost. I'll see you Sunday. Daryl Lawson Live signing off. Boom, boom. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'll see you Sunday. Have a great Memorial Weekend. Like I said, I'll be here on Sunday morning. I'll give you Monday off. All right. But I'll see you Sunday. And I'll see you on Facebook. Daryl Lawson Live signing off for now. I'll see you Sunday. God bless you. See you later. Bye-bye. Espanol, English, Deutsch. Normalmente produzco solo videos en inglés y español. Normally, I produce only videos in English and Spanish. Normalerweise produziere ich nur videos in English and Spanish. Pero hoy voy a hacer otra excepción y traducirlo también en alemán. 
but today I make another exception and translate it into German too. Aber heute werde ich nochmal eine Ausnahme machen und es auch in Deutsch übersetzen. Ja, algunas semanas tengo escrito en mi lista de tareas por hacer de traducir el video hashtag BTC4. Now, already some weeks ago, I have written on my to-do list to translate the video BTC4, hashtag BTC4. Schon seit ein paar Wochen habe ich äh, auf meiner To-Do-Liste geschrieben, ähm, den Video BTC4 in Deutsch zu übersetzen. Estoy segura que esta idea puede ayudar a mucha gente económicamente. I'm sure that this can help many people economically. Ich bin sicher, dass diese Idee vielen Leuten äh, finanziell helfen kann. Y da motivación para aprender Bitcoin. And give motivation to learn about Bitcoin. Und motivation geben, um über Bitcoin zu lernen. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy bajo, económico. At the moment the price of Bitcoin is very low, economic. Im Moment ist der Preis von Bitcoin sehr tief. Sería el momento ideal para invertir. Hoy es el 15 de abril 2015 would be the ideal moment to invest. Today is April 15th, 2015. Es wäre der ideale Moment zu investieren. Heute ist der 15. April 2015. El 27 de marzo 2015 he publicado en mi canal de YouTube Vanos Enigma el primer video sobre hashtag BTC4 explicando cómo me vino esta idea. On March 27th of 2015, um, I published my for the first video about hashtag BTC4 in my channel YouTube Vanos Enigma, explaining how I got the idea. Am 27. März 2015 habe ich in meinem YouTube-Channel Vanos Enigma den ersten, den ersten Video über Hashtag BTC4 veröffentlicht und äh, erzählt, erklärt, wie ich diese Idee bekommen habe. La idea consiste principalmente en lo siguiente. The idea mainly consists in the following. Die idea besteht hauptsächlich en folgenden, folgenden. Imprimir en direcciones de Bitcoin en papel. Diez o mínimo diez o mejor cien. To print Bitcoin directions in paper, at least 10 or better 100. Bitcoin adressen in Papier ausdrucken, um, minimum 10 or besser gleich 100. Y luego poner en cada dirección de Bitcoin una pequeña cantidad de Bitcoin. And then put in every Bitcoin direction a little amount of Bitcoin. 
und dann in jede Bitcoin-Adresse eine kleine Summe von Bitcoin transferieren. Y la próxima vez, cuando otra vez ves una persona por la calle pidiendo dinero, and the next time you see again a person begging for money on the street, und das nächste Mal, wenn du wieder eine Person auf der Straße betteln siehst, Y para tus amigos y amigas, and for your friends, of course, und für deine Freunde natürlich, o tal vez eh, de probina en un restaurante, or maybe a tip in a restaurant, oder trinkgeld im restaurant, bueno, a la hora de imprimir también, Copiar y guardar las llaves privadas de Bitcoin, de direcciones de Bitcoin. When you print the Bitcoin addresses, um, copy and save the private keys of the Bitcoin addresses, of course. Wenn man die Bitcoin Adressen druckt, auch die... Uh, auch die privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Address Schlüsseln, ähm, kopieren und speichern. Y a la hora de distribuir las direcciones de Bitcoin, escribir la fecha, por ejemplo, hoy es el 15 de abril 2015. Escribir la fecha más plus cuatro años eh, igual 15 de abril 2019. And then in the moment when you distribute uh, the Bitcoin addresses, you write the date, for example, today, April 15th, 2015, plus, plus four years uh, is April 15th, 2019. Und dann in dem Moment, wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen verteilt, auf das Papier schreiben, das heutige Datum, zum Beispiel 15. April 2015, plus vier Jahre, ist gleich 15.04.2019. Luego vas a explicar a la gente, mira, esta es la llave privada. Tú y yo la tengo, la tienes. Si no quitas, transfieres este dinero de Bitcoin, eh, en estos cuatro años yo lo vuelvo a tener, tener o sacar. Then you explain to the people, look, this is the private key. I have it and you have it. If you don't take this money, Bitcoin, out of this account, I will take it out in, this, um, in these four years, at the end of these four years. And then erklärst du den Leuten, ciao, das ist der private Schlüssel. Um, ich und du haben diesen privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Schlüssel. Wenn du äh, bis Ende dieser vier Jahre das Geld Bitcoin nicht raus tust, transfer, äh, dann hole ich es zurück. De esta forma das más motivación a la gente para empezar a aprender cómo funciona Bitcoin. This way, you give more motivation to the people to learn how the technology of Bitcoin functions. Auf diese Weise gibst du mehr Motivation den Leuten zu lernen, wie die Technologie von Bitcoin funktioniert. En mi video antiguo he explicado uh, cómo he tomado la decisión de los cuatro años. 
in my old video, I explained how I made the decision for the four years. In meinem original video habe ich erklärt, wie ich zu die Entscheidung getroffen habe äh, mit den vier Jahren. A continuación voy a pegar este video. Now later I will paste this video. Im Anschluss werde ich diesen Video ankleben. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy económico. Uh, at the moment the price of Bitcoin is very cheap. Pero casi todo el mundo tiene muy poco dinero para invertir. But almost everybody has a very little money to invest. Debería decir que esta idea me vino hoy especialmente cuando vi otra vez una chica ahí pidiendo dinero por la calle. Actually, I must say first this idea today I got especially when I saw again um, one girl begging for money in the streets. Me gustaría ayudar, pero yo tampoco me sobra mucho el dinero. I would really like to help everybody, but I, I don't have either too much money. And así que me vino la siguiente idea. So I got the following idea. It's, uh, it's más bien un juego. Uh, it's a rather a game. Um, lo que es muy importante elegir un monedero de Bitcoin que solo tú mismo misma, tienes la llave privada. What is very important to choose um, Bitcoin wallet a company which you only possess the private key. For example, uh, blockchain.info. Por ejemplo, la empresa blockchain.info. Luego, imprimir en papel um, la llave privada y también guardarlo tú mismo. Then to print in paper the private key and uh, of course save for, for yourself that private key. Bueno, ya estamos imprimiendo, imprime por lo menos 10. So now we are already printing, so at least print 10 directions, 10 direcciones. Luego pones algo de Bitcoin, una cantidad, lo que, lo que te da la gana en esta dirección. Then you put some Bitcoin, uh, the amount, whatever you want in, that, in these directions. Y la próxima vez que sales de casa ya tienes algo que dar a los que están ahí pidiendo por la calle. And the next time you go out of the house, you have already something to give for these people who are begging on the streets. Y por ejemplo, y claro, para tus amigos, amigas, and for your friends, of course. Eso da motivación a la gente para aprender Bitcoin y this gives motivation for the people to learn about Bitcoin. 
Y la parte del juego consiste en lo siguiente. And the game part uh, consists in the following. Explicas a la gente, mira, esta es la cl clave privada, que es la clave secreta. You explain to the people, look, this is the private key, which must be secret. And uh, you have it and uh, me. And uh, explicas, yo, esa persona y yo mismo la tiene. Y antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié un poco de idea de hasta cuatro años. First I thought of five years, but then I changed uh, my opinion to four years. Later explain. Después lo expli explico por qué. Les dices, mira, tienes cuatro años para poner esta cantidad de Bitcoin a otra dirección. Si no lo, lo has quitado después de cuatro años, yo lo quito. So you explain them, you have four years to take this Bitcoin out of this direction, of this secret uh, key direction. If uh, you don't do it, uh, I do it after these four years. So you lose this. That's the, this part of the game. It's uh, la parte del juego. He creado este hashtag uh, BTC4 para hacerlo un poco popular. I created this hashtag BTC4 to make it a little popular. Antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié a cuatro porque te has dado cuenta que en los Simpson la gente tiene cuatro dedos. Y Solo do, Dios tiene cinco dedos. Um, first, I thought of five years, but then I changed my mind to four years. Um, did you notice that in The Simpsons, people have a four fingers and only God has five fingers. Uh, I'll show some pictures. Voy a enseñar algunas imágenes de los Simpsons. De los manos y dedos de Simpsons. Some pictures of the hands and fingers of Simpsons. Uh, pero antes quiero recordar que um, es muy probable que en también cuatro o cinco en los próximos años el valor de Bitcoin puede subir mucho. Just want to remember before that uh, the price of Bitcoin, the value of Bitcoin can rise very much in these next years. Así que si solo pones una cantidad pequeña más tarde, Puede ser de gran ayuda. Even if you just put a little small amount later, it can be a big help. Uh, no solo para... Bueno, es un juego. <laughs> si la persona lo quita antes de cuatro años, para, es para esta persona. Si no, es para ti. Si te recuerdas y guardas bien la llave privada. So uh, it's, this is the game part, if uh, the, the person takes the money out, it's for that person, but if they forget it after these four years, you can take it out, and it can be really... <laughs> bueno, imprimir también la llave pública y la llave privada, y si por ejemplo, okay, first translate. Print not just the private key, but on also the public key. Así que si, por ejemplo, explicas a la gente. 
Mira, si alguna persona quiere enviarte Bitcoin, pero tú no tienes ninguna dirección, así que puedes dar este, esta llave pública a la persona. Mira, muy bien, la llave pública, no la llave secreta, das a esa persona o cualquier persona y te pueden enviar Bitcoin a esa dirección. So, remember, uh, the public key you can give to anybody and if somebody wants to send you some bitcoin and you and this person doesn't have any so you have already this public address where they can send you bitcoin <laughs>